Good morning, good afternoon. Whatever it is for you, I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Zach Schaumler. This is the Desperately Dating Podcast, episode 18. And joining me is my wonderful and wise stepmom, Karen. Karen, how are you? I am very well, thanks. Today's episode, I believe, if I'm correct, Mm -hmm. is all about vacationing and doing it separately. Is that correct? That is correct. Do you want to start us off on this topic? (laughs) Sure. I think it's kind of a fun topic that it seems like many times seems like a taboo subject that mm. um, that you can't uh, be in a good successful relationship and take vacation separately mm. so I know I thought, that I know people in my life where <sighs> we'll be at the gym and one guy'll say man my, my wife's on a vacation mm-hmm. and the guy the guys you know the guys in the group are like what your wife's in Australia for a mm-hmm. week without you like what you know and they're they're freaking out and the guy's like oh it's totally fine I don't want to go to Australia he's mm-hmm. like I'm happy I play my drums and She's gone, and you know they're yeah. they're totally fine. And some people have a really weird view of that, and I think some people maybe they're insecure in their relationship. And even you know Ted talks about this. The guy, my friend of mine, who does this mm-hmm. often, goes, "No, it's like we we vacation together. Sometimes we vacation apart, and I don't have any worries. I trust my wife, and mm-hmm. I'm happy." Yeah, so let's dig in a little bit there and see why sometimes people have such a negative reaction to that, even that concept. So why do people say no? You shouldn't vacation separately. I, I think it is. Tr- it comes to trust a little bit. I think so too. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's this. I, there's this an idea really in every, whether it's vacationing or any of a relationship. You'll see it in middle school even, where it's like, or you know how often you're texting your partner mm-hmm. or whatever. In high school, this happens all the time. You don't need to be with your partner twenty four seven, and you don't need to be in constant contact twenty four seven. It's mm-hmm. okay to have moments apart. And you know, you, we were talking in our pre production show, and you said that meeting. You said that. Um, there is something about missing someone and not being together all the time. You really mm-hmm. come to appreciate them a little bit more. Right. I, although I think that the reasons why some of the reasons why people are, feel uncomfortable with this concept are trust, like you said, like they're worried about what their partner's doing when they're out of sight. And what does that say about your relationship, the solidity of, you know, of your relationship? I, I got if another you one. Yeah. can't, you know, have them be off on their own you're worried about you know are they getting together with someone else what are they doing are they gambling are Mm. they you know who knows what the fears are there's a tv show i love called alone Mm -hmm. and there's this guy on alone Uh, alone you go in the woods and you're by yourself and you try to survive with 10 items and like nothing right you're literally trying to live off the land in alone and you have to film it and it's a tv show and this one guy was just kicking ass he was doing so well he built like this incredible shelter he built a boat out of like sticks and some like logs and you're like how the hell did you build a boat in the woods with nothing Mm -hmm. and he had a fireplace and a bed the dude had the best setup i've ever seen on the show and he left well he has had food wasn't hungry was kicking ass and you know why he left he was afraid of his abandoning his wife wow and i think a lot of it was when he was a kid his parents dropped him off 11 years old at an orphanage and left Oh, wow. And they just left. So he got abandoned as a kid. Abandonment issues, yeah. So he was afraid that Mm -hmm. if he was gone too long in the woods, because the person who's away the longest can Mm -hmm. go up to a year, person who's away the longest wins. Mm -hmm. And they were afraid, he was afraid that if I really stay away long enough to win the show, my wife's going to abandon me or feel abandoned. Ah. He went back. And it's really sad. Uh It's like, what the? Really? I think your wife loves you a ton. I don't think she's going to leave you at all. But he couldn't handle that. Mm -hmm. So it's not only the idea of, cheating and that Uh and what happens it's also does my wife forget about me Mm -hmm. does she feel like i'm forgetting about her right or is this hurtful somehow yeah there's that abandonment angle Uh too or like or rejection right if you so thinking if i go on vacation without my spouse they're going to feel rejected or Or do they they want to experience hawaii and they don't want me to get to experience hawaii Mm -hmm. it's that also that feeling of getting left out as well yeah there's so many there's so Mm -hmm. many angles there are could feel Uh inappropriate yeah I think there's also the angle, too, of um, when you don't want your partner to go on vacation without you or you don't want to go without your partner because you don't like being alone. Mm. You know, I think there's that, too. Yeah. And that may, I don't know, I think that may be a little unhealthy if you don't know how to enjoy your own company. Yeah. Yeah, totally. You um, know, if you for kind of forget or never learn how to do that if you've just always been in a relationship. Well, this topic came to be because you... You wrote an article about it on Desperately Dating about how you – know, I think it starts like my husband left me for a week and a half just now. It's kind of <laughs> – like, something, something like that, right? Because mm-hmm. my dad, my girlfriend, and I went to Montana together. <laughs> we went on this long trip. Yep. And it's not the first time we've done this. My dad and I in December last year went to Cincinnati for 
a little over a weekend and went to a football game and hung out. And mm-hmm. my dad and I spent a lot of time alone where you're not there on vacations away out of town or this mm-hmm. or that. And you're totally cool with it and you're totally fine. But you also, I've noticed, travel together very well. We do. And, you know, on the other side, um, I've traveled, you know, a fair amount without your dad. Um, and actually, he's taken off this weekend for a weekend away. Um, mm. really? And Where's yeah, he going? He's just going to go to a little Airbnb to have kind of a little writing retreat. Huh. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah, good for him. So what I would say about that is for us, since we happen to both be, you know, closer to the introvert end mm. of the spectrum, mm-hmm. this serves us very well. Um, because it's a time where we can just really have some solitude, even though I think that we are pretty good. We've worked out how to give each other space, even living together. Mm. Um, and it sounds like you and Liz have done that to have figured that out too, Mm -hmm. but there's no substitute though, really for having the whole house to yourself or, you Uh know, or the whole Airbnb or whatever. Yeah. Um, just to only have to worry about yourself. There are days where, so I used to live with my best friend, uh, best friend Nathan, mm-hmm. and occasionally I'll go back to their house and just have a, a day working there, hang out with the, his, Nathan's mom, Sally, and Roger, mm-hmm. the dad, and we just hang out, and I li- give Liz the house to herself, because she likes having the house to herself, and I'm, I, I don't mind, I go work and hang out with my old family, and it's really great, and mm-hmm. it's totally fine, and it's, we were talking before the show, I, you were like, kind of, we were talking like, why does this happen, why is there such a pushback against being alone, or against vacationing separately i think it's you kind of joked the world is run by extroverts yep the world is run by a bunch of people that never want to be alone and want to talk to your head off all the time yeah because i think part of it is part of why you never hear introvert voices mm-hmm. they don't do podcasts they that's don't, right they don't fucking, they're quiet they're in the back room with a hoodie on hiding no they're thinking and contemplating that's and... fair You're, yeah but like you ever my we should be is, marketing ourselves <laughs> Well, which cat do you hear though? You hear like my, my we have a cat at my house, mm-hmm. Tucker. He's loud in a good way, very talkative, mm-hmm. very friendly. I call him an extrovert cat. Where he'll come visit with he doesn't give he's like a dog. He doesn't give a fuck who you are. He can be <laughs> someone you've never met. He'll come sit on your lap and purr. He just wants to be around people. Mm-hmm. Your cat is not an extrovert. He's <laughs> nope. an introvert. He goes and hides upstairs. <laughs> and he, he likes being alone. Yeah. Which cat do you hear from? That's right. I'm never going to hear. No one who doesn't know your cat very intimately is going to ever hear from your cat. But life is the same way. Mm -hmm. You're only going to hear opinions and hear boisterous talk from people who are extroverts. Mm -hmm. You don't often hear introverted opinions or angles because I think that's not very popular and we don't share them very often. Well, I think, too, that maybe you have to listen a little bit harder um, Mm. to hear those introvert voices because I think that we... We do tend to, you know, contemplate and be, you know, more thoughtful and choose our words a little bit more, you know, selectively. But but you can hear if you listen for those introvert mm-hmm. voices. Um, I think. But introverts definitely benefit from vacations apart, I think. I think so. Yeah. And I think there is, you go back to like, how much, how nice was it to see my dad when we came back from Cincinnati? Yeah. It was great. I mean, he was gone for a while and he came back with a bunch of fun stories and then we had fun getting caught up on what happened at home and it was just nice to miss him a little, you know, and then to have kind of some little romantic conversations when he's gone, you know, mm-hmm. tell him how much I miss him and, and the phone calls away are great. And I then, went to New York. Yeah. I went mm-hmm. to New York in February and it was actually literally Liz moves in on a Thursday. I think literally on Friday I fly to New York. So it's funny, like she moved in and then I left. <laughs> And Mm -hmm. it was nice because she got to acclimate to the house, but also when I was gone, we missed each other. Mm -hmm. And leading up to that, we spent a lot of time almost every day, even though she wasn't living with me at that point, we were spending almost every day together. So when I was gone, it was like a little bit of breathing room to miss each other a little bit. Mm -hmm. And really nice. I mean, it's, you really, the heart does grow fonder when you're apart. I think there is some truth to that. I think some other um, benefits to vacationing separately are um, when maybe you have different interests or you like to vacation in different Mm -hmm. ways. (laughs) You know, I'm thinking about sometimes people, um, some people like to vacation and go and, you know, hit every single tourist trap or see, you know, pack Mm -hmm. just as much as they can into a vacation. Whereas, you know, another person might just be content to go and lay on a beach somewhere and not do a lot much of anything. Well, also, there might just be certain trips. Mm -hmm. A a great example I can think of my best friend Nathan's parents go on vacations together all the time. They go to uh, Mardi Gras in Mm -hmm. uh, Louisiana. They go to California together. But recently, Roger, the dad, went on a hunting trip way in the woods in northern Idaho. Mm -hmm. And Sally's like, look, I honestly don't want in on that trip. Uh, Mm -hmm. I like going to Mardi Gras. I like going to California. I don't feel any need to go hunting in Idaho and walk up gigantic mountains 
That's mm-hmm. your trip you can have to, with our son on, you know, that's your thing. Right. Sometimes there are mm-hmm. trips that just the other person isn't interested in, and that's okay as well. Yeah, I completely agree. Like if the destination isn't appealing. Um, and I think it's also can be a good way for you to maintain some of those other relationships in your life. You know, mm-hmm. I'm thinking about how um, this one's kind of a twofer, but at some point, you know, once the pandemic and all this stuff uh, blows over, hopefully we'll be able to travel internationally again. And I've always wanted to go and experience um, Day of the Dead in Mexico with a mm. girlfriend of mine who she mm-hmm. goes pretty frequently and is, um, likes to go to this certain little town. And And I would love to go and do that, not only just to experience that, but also to have some special one-on-one time with her. And um, neither uh, the the trip to Mexico doesn't appeal to your dad at all. And he totally supports me spending time with my friends. So that's going to be a trip that at some point, hopefully in the future, I will take on my own. The running joke in high school is you see this on like Reddit or memes all the time mm-hmm. where you're like, oh, you're even in college, like your friend gets a girlfriend and you never see your friend again. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's not actually good. Mm-hmm. That's because that means you're if you're if your best friend has got got a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever. And they're only ever hanging out with their partner and they cut off all their relationships in their lives. It's not healthy. Mm-hmm. And so trips apart, moments apart, days apart, relationships apart, or, you know, time apart. When I, my dad and I go to Cincinnati together, even though he's married, even though I'm in a relationship, mm-hmm. it gives us time away from our partners to cultivate our relationship together. Yep. Mm-hmm. Same with Nathan. Nathan and I go fishing together. Yep. There's so many moments. It's okay to have other relationships and other friendships and other moments with other people in your life. And if you're in a relationship and you're threatened by your friend's your partner's friends. Mm-hmm. That's fucking unhealthy. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> yep. Unless, unless the like, it's hey, the guy's really close <laughs> with this other girl, and the girl's moving in, and you're man. Fine, I get it. But how often does that really happen? It's not. I don't yeah. know. Or if and, they're total dickheads or yeah, whatever bad influences. <laughs> sure, I, I get that one. But for the most part, it's okay to have friendships, and it's okay to. It, yeah, it's healthy. It's healthy. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I think another good reason to consider vacationing separately is that it's a way to sort of maintain that relationship with yourself. So like when your dad Mm -hmm. is going away, you know, on these trips with you or, you know, when he went to Greece, um, it was an opportunity for me to just be by myself and kind of maintain that relationship. It sounds weird, but um, I think it's good to keep those skills to know how to be happy on your own. The skills of being alone and being happy, being by yourself. Whether you're an introvert or not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Extroverts really fucking struggle with that. Right. But, you know, you were mentioning before, too, how, you know, you're feeling like you might be sort of at a loss for a little bit if, you know, if Liz was gone and just in some of these different um, aspects of your life. I had this realization yesterday. Um, I got a Costco card recently. (laughs) Fucking dude. I'm telling you, by the way, their pizza, (laughs) the Costco pizza. That shit is really good. But I got a a moment where I got a Costco card and I was like, oh, my gosh, I made it. Like I really I felt like an adult and I'm really grateful. Oh, yeah. To the people who listen and watch my podcast, I'm so grateful that um, that, you know, doing my job has allowed me to get a Costco card. It's like that was a big aha moment for Mm me. Um, But we're getting back from Costco, me and Liz, and we're unloading the car. And we got like a tent and we got a tarp and just camping shit, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, I, 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 so two nights ago, I was in bed about to buy a tent on Amazon. And Liz goes, ah, let's, let's wait. Let's see what Costco has. Mm -hmm. Costco had a bigger tent for cheaper that was Mm -hmm. better, better brand, bigger size, better price. Everything about the tent at Costco is better. And she was the one who was like, hey, maybe take a second and let's, let's see what our other options are before you rush out and buy what you you want. Mm -hmm. And I just had this moment, I'm unpacking this tent, and I'm like, I'm so glad Liz is in my life. I'm so glad she went to Costco with me. I'm just grateful for her. I was like, man, I don't know, I don't know what I would do alone. I don't know what I would do at this point without her. And there is, I, I am glad for the partnership, but also I, I hope I never get too wrapped up where I can't exist without her, if that makes exactly. sense. Exactly, yeah, yeah. The example that I think of in um, my relationship with your dad is I do most of our of the cooking and you know we're both totally happy with that you yeah. know it's worked out mm-hmm. we, you know it's like a finely oiled machine or whatever but um i think it's good that he knows how and that he yeah. <laughs> you know still does that can when i'm not around himself. he can fend for himself because i mean honestly none of the time that we have is um should be taken for granted you never know i think that's another argument why in a relationship say if you know if your money is combined that um both partners are aware of how to manage things or at least have a working knowledge of it, even if one of the partners takes more of a lead on that. You know, it's it's not good to be completely isolated from anything, any job or duty or whatever um, that goes into living. 
I think it's a mistake to have that rest full, you know, solely on one partner's shoulders. I, I want to. Can I? Can I go on a random tangent? Heck that's okay. yeah. It's not really related. To this we topic, love but random it is, tangents. You talked about cooking, and I have to say, if you're listening, um, I learned how to make a very basic dish from Karen recently. Oh, which has like changed my life. I have it almost every night. It's just you cut up vegetables. I cut up potatoes, uh, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, uh, sometimes tomatoes, and I put them on a a sheet, sheet pan. Mm-hmm. Yep. I pour olive oil over top, and then I have some Johnny seasoning salt I put on it, and then I put on some garlic powder, mm-hmm. and I bake it for 25 minutes at 400 degrees. Fucking uh, sometimes 26 minutes. You got to check the potatoes with a fork. <laughs> yep. Um, but 25, 26 minutes of that, and it's the most heavenly. And actually, add more seasoning than you think. Uh, Karen taught me that like a week ago, two weeks ago, and it's changed my life completely. It's like all I've been eating. I'm, glad uh, you I'm losing it. a little bit of weight. It's really great, actually. <laughs> it's a good way to get your veggies in. <laughs> oh, dude, it's it's perfect. And so I, I just heard cooking. I was like, gotta. This is my only chance to say this to you <laughs> on a show, and I want the world to hear it. So there well, we go. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad it's made a difference. I want to say about traveling separately. There is a red flag where if you're only traveling separately, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a big problem too. Yes. It's okay. How many? Like every every other every third every fourth vacation you got you and my dad take something like that, right? There's a ratio where you, you go together a lot, and sometimes you go separately. But if every single one is separately, that's not necessarily good. Yeah, well, I think the difference is: are you vacationing separately um, for for the wrong reasons? Meaning mm-hmm. to you, escape each other, <laughs> to escape each other, or because you just have no. No shared interests. Um, Do you not want to hang out yeah, together? Yeah, or if you don't want to hang out to each other, mm-hmm. or if, you know, travel kind of comes with its own challenges, and, you know, maybe that brings out the worst in your relationship. Mm-hmm. I yeah. don't know. But, yeah, I think it's definitely a red flag if you never, ever want to vacation with your partner. But if you do sometimes, I think that can be healthy. Yeah. And I'm sure, look, every time we make a, a statement like that, there's some exception to the rule. There's some, sure. there, there's some couple out there that they went into the relationship and they hate traveling together and that's just how it is. And mm-hmm. they, everything else works for them. They just they know traveling to Greece together is not something you want to do. Right. Fine. I totally mm-hmm. get it. There are, there's always an exception. But I do think that the majority of the time when you hear of, like my friend uh, Ted who goes on vacation separate from his wife, it's not every vacation. Mm-hmm. And it's because they like going on dates. They like being together. And you're right. If they were going to Mexico, he was going to Mexico, she was going to Africa because they just didn't want to be together mm-hmm. and wanted to be totally apart and didn't traveling with such a negative experience together. Like we can't do mm-hmm. it together at all. That's a red flag. Or if your home life in your relationship is so awful that you need to take a vacation from it to mm-hmm. get away. Yeah. Then that's a red flag, too. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. Um, do you have anything else you want to add? I think that we pretty much covered it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, we got to talk about vacationing together. Yes, we do. I think that's a separate do. topic. I think so, too. And that's um, a really fun one. I we'll think. dive into it, yeah. But, I, I, guys, that's all I have for today. That's all Karen has. Um, yep, yeah. that's all. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll We'll be back on the next episode.